this canonical form of the state space model, something we haven't talked about before, so I wanted to make sure that we went back and looked at it. There are several canonical forms for the state equations, all of which can be found via basis transformations from other forms. So the phase variable canonical form is the one that we're going to need for this uh, state space controller design. Uh, the phase variable canonical form is represented by the single input, single output state model, B1, right here, uh, where the A matrix is of this form. Um, the, these are just parentheses. I don't, it doesn't need to be all of that gobbledygook. Uh, and so this is, uh, the A matrix is a bunch of zeros and ones along the diagonal. It's just actually, it's just the off diagonal. It's, um, one row, or, or, or one, um, one diagonal above the primary diagonal of the matrix. And then the, the bottom row is all, uh, it, it just depends on the system. So you can, you can rewrite any system, uh, you can transform it into this form where most of the A matrix is zeros and ones, and then you just have this bottom row that's not. And also, the B matrix can be transformed to be all zeros, except for uh, a one at the very bottom. And the D matrix uh, and the C matrix are just whatever they end up being in this transformation. So in order to transform a single input, single output system, A, B, C, D, with state vector x to phase variable canonical form, we change basis via the substitution x equals T, C, XC into the, uh, into the original system, which gives that the canonical form A matrix is equal to this transformation matrix inverted times the original A matrix times the transformation matrix again. And I don't think I sent this to you guys. I'll send this to you guys, though. I realize that these controls notes are like 106 pages now. Types. Which, which means this is almost a book. <laughs> it's the right size for a book. It's compile and sell. It's compile and sell, yeah. I, I am, uh, uh, I was surprised to find that. <laughs> I just like write up uh, lecture notes and then one day it became more than just like a few lecture notes. So, whatever. It's good. Uh, so then the B matrix is similar. I, so we've done we've done uh, basis transformations of state models before. So this is the same. It's just that we have a very specific uh, transformation matrix T C. The special form of equation B one yields the following characteristic polynomial. Okay, um, which is this. So. The reason that we do we we do this is that this yields this exact polynomial, which depends all on these a's. Okay. Uh, recall that eigenvalues of a system are invariant to basis change. That's an important fact. Something that we need to keep in mind always, um, and therefore, so is its characteristic polynomial. From this, we can conclude that AC can be completely determined by finding the characteristic polynomial of the original matrix A. Because the characteristic polynomial is the same for any matrix. And we also said that when it's in this form, the characteristic polynomial is just these bottom row coefficients. Therefore, we're going to see like the takeaway here in a second, um, uh, we we can just simply we can just simply find the characteristic polynomial of the original A matrix, and we can find this A C form immediately because we know what all those A coefficients are from the characteristic polynomial, which is nice. Uh, B C is already fully defined. Um, 
but CC and DC remain undetermined. Okay. They may be found by discovering the transformation matrix TC, which has always been implicit up to this point. We haven't actually found what it is. Um, and substituting it into the equation B2. So we can find uh, TC by using these uh, uh, upper two relationships. So this is the this is the part. This is going to um, this is a lot of work. It's like they call it. It's a long run for a short slide. Okay. It's a lot of work that we need to do to build up this canonical phase canonical form. But once we were there, then we can go back to our controller design, and it'll just be uh, no problem. Like it'll be it'll be easy. But we have to do a whole lot of work up front, and then. Then it's easy. Uh, okay. So the phase variable canonical form transformation matrix TC can be found by relating the controllability matrices of the original form and the canonical form. What is controllability? What is a controllability matrix? I'm glad you asked. Do you know what we have for that? An appendix. We have an appendix for that. You guys thought you were going to get away without another appendix, but you were wrong. But this appendix is only one, only one uh, slide, so not so bad. Okay. The three topics, controllability, observability, and stabilizability, are three topics of central concern to linear systems theory okay so we are just going to scratch the surface but it's going to be worth having this discussion so controllability is defined as follows if there exists some input to a linear system such that any initial state in its state space can be evolved in finite time to any final state in its state space the system is controllable Okay. Otherwise, the system is uncontrollable. So if you could start at any state and evolve it in finite time, it could take a long time. But if, as long as you can get it from point A to point B in space, there are no you can't pick two um, that you can't do that for. So you can always get from one to another in finite time. Then you're controllable. If you can't do that, then it's uncontrolled. Okay. All right. Uh, a, a given system's controllability can be determined from the following. So there's this thing called the controllability matrix. That, you know, I'm using the I'm using the big marker to smudge out the silly stuff, but that's just a matrix. So let a linear system of order n and number of inputs R have the state space model A, B, C, D. So those are our A, B, C, D matrices. We define the N by N, R. So uh, the N, R. R is the number of inputs, and N is the order of the system, right? So N rows and then N times R columns. Uh, the controllability matrix is this, and it's um, we use the script U as the controllability matrix. Um, so this matrix is, we just stick the B matrix in, and then the next, uh, uh, column is going to be A times B. Well, I mean, if you have a single input system, it's just a single column. But if it's a multiple input system, you have multiple columns. Um, uh, you put those columns in next to it. And then A squared times B. So you just keep populating this matrix with these smaller matrix sub-matrices, right? And that's a common idiom is to use this vertical bar to separate those sections. There's nothing magical about it. Okay. 
uh, the following well-known theorem, left unproven here, uh, allows us to easily determine the controllability of a given system. So it's like, it's just pretty cool, it's very powerful. Uh, proving this is not easy, but it, it, it can be done. Uh, a linear system is controllable if its controllability matrix has full rank. If it is less than full rank, the linear system is uncontrollable. Now, you guys have used that terminology in linear algebra, right? Full rank of a matrix. So, the following statements all are equivalent, I believe. Um, the matrix... Uh, it has n linearly independent columns. The matrix has n linearly independent rows. The matrix is, uh, uh, is of full rank. Um, there, if it's a, if it's a square matrix, it's invertible. There are some others, but I can't remember them right now. Uh, if you look at it as a map, uh, I don't think I don't. I couldn't say that off the top of my head. Maybe I will. I will be. Uh, I will refrain from making a pronouncement about that. Yeah. Uh, that means that's to do with functions. Um, it has to do with uh, if you have an element in the set that you're mapping from, um, it matches up with an element the set you're mapping to. Um, it means you cover the entire thing, and then the reverse is also true. So, not to get, put any pressure on you guys, but this is this is Alex from our system dynamics class. Alex is, is, you know, middle of the build phase of their project, um, and I think they're going to get theirs done. So I'm just saying, you know, well, healthy competition couldn't hurt. There's also costing, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, all pretty much funded out of my pocket and cheap, so it's, yeah, it, it, like 100 bucks probably for the whole thing, maybe two. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty cheap one, but I'm just, I'm reimbursing them. <laughs> I'm giving them cash for receipts. It's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So controllability, pretty cool idea. It's, this is actually, this is a, this is a, this is well into, there's a lot to do, uh, in, modern control theory about controllability, observability, etc. But controllability is all we need right now, so we're going to skip back now. So we're going to say, okay, we just picked up our definition of controllability and our controllability matrix specifically. We're going to use that back here, okay? So Let's remember what this is. So the, the phase variable canonical form transformation uh, matrix can be found by relating the controllability matrices of the original form and the canonical form. Phase variable canonical form, uh, canonical transformation. The transformation matrix from a system representation with controllability matrix U to a phase variable canonical transformation uh, uh, with controllability matrix UC is TC equals the controllability matrix of the canonical system times the controllability matrix of the original system inverted. Whew. Right? However, that being said, uh, it's not even that it's not even that bad to prove because I'm gonna do it and I never do proofs that are hard in class because that's a lot it's really hard setting yourself up for a headache I really love how how this happens this typography as if it wasn't confusing enough so proof 
By the definition of the controllability matrix, the original controllability matrix is this, right? We just saw this definition. So that's what the controllability matrix of the original system is. And that of the canonical form, then, since it has different B matrix and a different A matrix, is this. So those are our two original matrices. So we're going to do the old plug and chug proof, which is nice. Note that U and UC are both known from above. Okay, so we can know them and we can uh, then plug these, plug these in. We relate the two forms by applying equation B2 to equation B6 to yield. So B2 is this transformation um, uh, to B6, which is this UC. And we yield this. So we plugged in what BC is in terms of B, and what AC is in terms of A, and what BC is in terms of B again, etc., etc. Keep going. And we're going to see some things emerge here. Uh, first of all, emergence. Yes. So, first of all, do you notice that the B, so B there, B here, A, B there, A, B here in our original controllability matrix, A squared B, A squared B, so etc. right? Those keep happening. So if I was to multiply, left multiply this by TC, I would also get rid of all of these, that's maybe a property of matrix multiplication you don't know is that you can distribute it through these sub matrices on the left and it cancels so so if we left multiply by TC uh, we get the original U so therefore this is equivalent to just being TC times U and then it's a simple inverse to, to solve for TC so there's the proof just solving for it directly. So, now that I've convinced you that this is the transformation matrix that gets you to the canonical form, okay, uh, let's have a blank page. Um, oh, well, I guess we're done, right? We, If we have TC, then we have everything here we have all of our we have our canonical form uh, a b c and d matrices from our original a b c d matrices and we're done no problemo right just we're done I wish that I could blame that no problemo on like Sudafed or something but I don't I'm not I haven't taken any yet anyways uh, just fatigue and being a, having a cold. So, we have TC. We have our canonical form of our state equation. So we can always we can transform into this. And now that I've convinced you that you can do that, uh, the only thing that remains to be done is to find out why it matters that we can get it in that canonical form um, for finding our gains. That's what we're all about. We're all about gains here, right? Maxin and Gaines. Never skip flight. Never skip flight. <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, there we go.